Hmm. Interesting. He published his total compensation on Twitter. I wonder... Let's add... Oh my god. Hi. My name is Francois. I'm an engineering manager. I focus mostly on developer productivity platforms and lean on toward front-end technologies. So a couple of days ago, Dan Abramov, one of the engineers well-known for the Redux library, published the details of his compensation package for his work at Facebook. Uh, he posted that on Twitter. Every time that happens, there are always a lot of reactions in social medias from the folks who think that they're grossly underpaid, especially for working at these large companies that are known to pay a fair amount and they're famous people. And on the other end of the spectrum, there's folks who are not used to seeing such high numbers for compensation, especially folks in other regions or in other countries who think it's banana. So what I want to do is to go through the information he provided, analyze it, and give my take on this. So looking at it now, before watching the rest of the video, what do you think? Is he overpaid? Is he underpaid or something else? Leave a comment below and then we'll see if you agree with me. All right, so let's look at this. So you have a base salary. Uh, he did the conversion for us to US dollars. So 190,000 base salary, a performance bonus that bumps that to 220. He has $600,000 worth of vested stocks uh, and does not seem to know how much he has left uh, because of issues with his bank account. He's also located in the UK, I, th I believe London, and that matters for total cost of living. And there's a bunch of reactions to it too. Like someone here that agrees that it's a good compensation, but that with his experience and working at Facebook, it feels a little on the low side. And on the other hand of the spectrum, we have the reactions on how high the numbers are. And since he's a self-thought engineer, uh, some folks believe that it's a great success story. So basically, it ranges from folks who think it's way too low from somebody famous and has experience with this much impact on the ecosystem. And on the other side, you have the folks who think it's bonkers. A lot of folks will point out that in some of their countries, they're making like a half of that, a third of that, a tenth of that even. With the internet being a global experience and it ranging every country in the world, that's kind of an inevitable reaction and a really expected. So who's right? Which one it is? Let's start breaking things down. I'm only going to use the information that we have readily available. We could dig further to fill in the gaps, but I really want to contrast the info we have with the reactions based solely on, on this Twitter post. So immediately we're hitting the first problem. There is the conversion from pounds to US dollars. However, you can't really compare currencies like that. The purchasing power and the cost of living are going to be really different. And unless you're making all of your purchases online across the country, um, that does not really give you a lot of info. Fortunately, there is some website that allows you to, at a glance, compare cost of living. So I just Googled it quickly. And if we look at the difference between, let's say, London and uh, another very high cost of living city, in the US, New York City. The difference is definitely there. Uh, New York City is overhaul more expensive. Not in every category, but overhaul, especially when it comes to housing, it's more expensive. Now, it's not two, three times more expensive. It's still kind of in the same order of magnitude. So for this particular case, the numbers will be comparable. It's not like Dan is working in a much smaller country that have an extremely low cost of living here. Even for other metro areas in the West, if we were talking about, let's say, Montreal in Canada, well, housing could be a third of the price in some cases. And now you really have to take the cost of living into account. The next part to consider, especially when looking at his base salary, is that he does work at Facebook, which is part of the FANGs, the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, 
and Google of the world. Sometimes also we include uh, Microsoft there. These are big tech companies that are famous for just how much they pay. You could live in the exact same area and work at another company and sometimes make half or even a third of the salary. If some smaller companies sometimes try to directly compete with the fangs, but it's not that common. So why doesn't everyone work there? I mean, if they pay more money, there's a wide range of reasons. For some folks, they just can't pass their quite particular interviews that are quite controversial at time. Uh, sometimes people just don't like the companies themselves. Uh, I'm sure you've seen in the news how people are looking down on Facebook. And sometimes it's just the problem space. Some folks like having more autonomy to shape a startup or they want to work in a specific industry like maybe a nonprofit or education. And basically the fangs are not for everybody. There's more to life than just money. Point is though, anyone who works there will have an income that's significantly inflated to what you would expect, no matter the location. All right, the next part is the bonus. And that one is tricky unless you know how Facebook operates because different companies handle bonuses differently. For some, the bonus is paid depending on company performance. So as long as the company grows, you will get all or even more than your target bonus. At other companies, it depends on your performance. And at some, as long as you're meeting expectations, you will get the full bonus. At others, you need to really go above and beyond to get it. And the full bonus is almost never given. Now, to be fair, considering the wording that he used here, saying that the bonus bumps his compensation to 220, it's kind of fair to make the assumption and a lot of companies do this, that most people get the full bonus. But still, this is not information that we have here. And the question is definitely worth asking. Now, the next piece is definitely the meat of this puzzle, the equity. Now, Facebook is a public company, which means that their stocks are traded in on the market on public exchange. So as far as compensation goes, you could get your stocks and sell them right away. So they're pretty much compensation. If you were in the US, it would be on your W2, like the rest of your income. This is in contrast with startups or private companies where they will generally give you stock options, which lets you purchase stocks at a specific price later down the road. And for a lot of folks, those are basically glorified scratch tickets. They're not really worth anything unless you get really lucky. But in this case, they are very likely RSUs, so they are basically money. The problem is that Dan gave us the total amount of bested stock that he has. That does not tell us anything about how much money he makes in a given year. Now, for folks who are not familiar, most big tech companies will give you an equity grant, so an amount of stocks over generally four years. On the first year, you will get 25% of the amount. And then every couple of months, you will get 25% divided by the rate that you're getting them. So if it's every three months, you'll get uh, one fourth of one fourth essentially. This varies a lot by companies, but that schedule is fairly common, so we can make this assumption. However, Facebook stocks went up a bunch over the years. Dan Abramoff started at Facebook six years ago. The stock went up about three and a half times since then, and we don't know. It is Dan Abramoff telling us that he had 600k worth of stock vested based on their initial value, or is it how much he has today. So then we'd have to do the math uh, to go back and figure out uh, how much he was getting every time a grant was vesting. And honestly, that's more math than I'm willing to do right now. In the simplest, we could do 600k divided by six years, assume that he's talking about the initial grant value, and then we'd get to a 320k amount. But it's very unlikely that this was was going on. And thus, it's really difficult to know what is yearly compensation is, including equity vesting. 
And often for folks who have been at these big public companies for several years, well, their stocks have skyrocketed and now their yearly income is extremely high, essentially because they got lucky. It's not like they got raises that brought them here. And that is a really common situation. So you will see folks who have been there since either before the IPO, before the company came, became public. And now they're making as much as like five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, maybe more, even though for their role that is completely out of band. And that's just because the company committed to giving them a certain amount of stocks and the value of the stocks just went up the roof. And then there's companies like Amazon, where when they give the equity, it's more on a curve. So it's different amounts every year, different percentage. And now it gets even more complicated to figure out what their yearly average compensation is. More importantly, he mentions in the tweet that because he cannot access his bank account, he does not know how much unvested stocks he has, which can be a huge part of his total compensation. So we are missing a key part of the information. And let's not forget other source of compensation that may be more and direct. For example, we don't have any information about his retirement plan matching. I have no idea how it works in the UK. In the US, it would be a 401k. And that matching can add up to a lot of money. Some employers also do employee stock purchase plans when you can buy the stock of the company at a discount. And for a company where the stock is going up, that can dramatically increase your compensation. I have no idea if Facebook has an ESPP. But then for the next part is even if we knew his total compensation, well, is he paid a lot or not based on his experience and impact? The answer to that spoiler is we don't know. We have to be careful to not fall into the idolization trap. Yes, Dan Abramov is a famous figure in the engineering community. He was one of the person who brought Redux to the front end world, and many of us use this work. He's also a very visible face in the front end world in general and in the open source world. But we don't know how well he's doing at work. For all we know, he could be killing it and he's one of the best person in his team. On the other hand, maybe everything that we see in the outside world is not representative of his impact on Facebook itself. We do know that he's great at mentorship and at explaining complex problems to other engineers because he makes trainings like the Just JavaScript course. But who knows how it looks like inside Facebook? Only his peers and his manager know that. We certainly can't tell from just a Twitter post talking about money. Or honestly, from what we see in social media. Now I'm sure that he's doing great, but part of it is my own bias. It's not like we have access to his yearly review, right? So in short, we can't make assumptions. Should Dan Abramov get promoted? Should he make even more money? Is he about to get fired? We don't know. So all we know is that he works for a fan company, which does compensate generally much higher than others. He works in a large tech hub with high cost of living and his salary reflects that. We know for sure that he's certainly not starving and that he's just well paid, but that's pretty much the extent of what we know. We don't have the full picture and all around, we can't form an opinion without more complete data. And that's the entire point I wanted to make with this video. It's a healthy thing to talk salaries with your peers and to look up resources online and in social medias to understand how software engineers are paid so that you can better negotiate for your own roles. And by the way, if your employer asks you not to, well, in the US at least, that's illegal. You are totally allowed to discuss salary, no matter how taboo it could be. It really shouldn't be. All around, it gives you a lot of tools in your toolbox to have these hard discussions with your employer and to make sure that you're not being discriminated against. But if you're just looking up online and you don't understand how to interpret the data or worse, you're looking at incomplete data, 
then it might just add to your confusion and could give you an unrealistic or definitely incomplete view of the topic. In this video, I talked about some of that and raised some of the points you should be looking for, but you definitely should do your own due diligence. And if you have more questions about how compensation works in the tech industry, do feel free to put a comment below. I've been an engineering manager and a hiring manager for many, many years, and I'd be more than happy to help. And on that note, thank you. Do subscribe if you're interested in these type of topics, and I'll see you in the next one.